Good afternoon. Um, just a, a brief introduction of Carai Donare. She's a modern day troubadour and scholar of Occitan culture, which is a pro was a progressive and egalitarian society in the Middle Ages. She received her doctorate from the Catholic University of America and has been on the faculty of U.S. and international universities teaching French, Spanish, and English languages, as well as literature, history, film, politics, and Western civilization. For several years, she lectured on the troubadours at Eastern Carolina University's Fletcher School of Music. She now teaches online at the California State University, the Long Beach. In addition to giving performances on the troubadours at universities, conferences, festivals, and on television in the U.S., she was recently featured on a program on French 3 television about her CD, Prêtes à Partage. The CD is an exploration in prose and original compositions of the brilliance of Occitan culture and its destruction due to the Albigensian Crusade. She's currently working on a presentation in poetry and song of Esclamon de Froid. So all of the songs and poetry in her presentation are her own composition. And um, she asks that you please hold your applause till the very end of the presentation. Thank you. May I introduce Rai Donare. Thank you very much, Tina. And thank you to uh, Bookstock and the um, organizers and the sponsors for Bookstock, without which this wouldn't take place. So, let me take you on a journey, a journey back through time to the 13th century. But cast out from your mind the idea of a romantic age. For throughout Europe, feudalism held all in its vice-like grip. All were under the control of their feudal overlord and the Roman church. Yet, in lands below the River Loire, in what is today France, rays of light pierced the monotonous misery of everyday life and the seeds of a blossoming renaissance were sown in Occitania. Occitania, Madonna contras d'Adora, terra del cor, prats verdos, pix de chat, subre bello, tech del mondo, meo esprit e uccats. Aurete desglendada, a laures aferamo, Nivolas plavantas a planuras blavinelas desterminat. Serra les andejans e selvas espesas vende mia abundanta amnigreta saborosas. Crii degle de mosca mumara de bartasana furo duro tremeloso del gozo perdudo. Ara, ara, tomba do toral da via de montagna, managimo folena del reviele vetat. Destruisamente recantat historia sanglantada, sabi pas un podria cambiar vos dolenza. Desvencidora, rebombada, recreada, revisqueada. Gauchosamente, mohon cor, am fin amor, am fin amor tras figa. Vostre nom, apeli meses brandans pari, reviver lo vastetat, maravioso, gracie beutat, lo vueg superbo, Del destermen silencio, ajudaret me retraparlo, Madonna Occitania, Madonna Ara. Occitania, it never existed as an independent country. It was a loosely bound linguistic and cultural region with shared customs and traditions. Occitania embodied an ideal a society whose very core comprised an ethical code of right action and right thought, called parace. Parace has no direct equivalent in English. It comprises the values of compassion, honesty, truthfulness, loyalty, honor, justice, hospitality, 
generosity, good heart, good faith, and balance within oneself and the world. A person who embodied Parache had Pretz, and Pretz defined that person's worth, not his or her social status, status or religion. Parache was expressed throughout the societal structure that attempted to install a kingdom of heaven on earth, and it contrasted markedly with most of our other parts of Europe. For Occitan society was open and tolerant, radically different to the rigid feudal system where the three classes of nobles, clergy and peasants were immutably frozen, where the Roman church reigned jealously supreme, where women were considered as the devil's gateway and as bags of excrement, and where no opposition to church or state was tolerated. Occitania was a world apart. Semi-autonomous regions were ruled by counts and viscounts. The city of Toulouse elected at an autonomous town council called Capitouls, composed of the rising middle class that provided all regulatory functions of government, including trading and manufacturing, banking, police, judicial, police, uh, ju property registration, a common seal, the power to set and raise taxation, to manage a militia, and even to declare and wage war. Any stranger who entered the gates of Toulouse was embraced and welcomed and immediately became a citizen. Religious practices other than those of the Roman church were tolerated. Jews and those considered heretics by the Rome by the Roman Church held high governmental positions. Jewish and Muslim medical practices were available and all religions were welcome to teach at the medical school of Montpellier. Arabic music schools abounded. Spiritual movements openly questioned the status quo. Subclasses were allowed social mobility and through his art, the son of a servant or even a prostitute could rise to becoming one of the highest people in the land. Gender equality among nobles allowed women to receive an education, to write their own wills, and even to govern their own lands, like Esclamont de Narbonne, or to lead spiritual movements, like Esclamont de Foy. This philosophy of Paracha was echoed through the songs of the troubadours, poets, composers, philosophers, dramatists, rock stars of their day. They sang not in French, but in Occitan, la lengua doc, a language so important that apart from Latin, it was the only one that could be used for legal and administrative purposes throughout Europe and the Holy Land. Every spring, troubadours from far and near flocked to the castle of Puyver for a joyous festival and competition. Music and laughter filled the air as the guests embarked on small boats garlanded with sweet-smelling flowers out onto the moonlit lake. Puiver, lotems apressor, reunis at son cara, chon salangan, which accord chantems apressor. Puiver, neus des legan, asinie florison, al ses cantan ferias pro tantems apressor. Sang des sefanas, my fair marajotan, cordas de la amistad, my apinan. Puiver, se renovelo un cap en cara y ses vida revegera nuestra puiver. Puiver, est you seradas remembren la san cara, John Vlongeran, which cocher and dulces seradas. Puiver, gausen flandregam per caminar sobre jads, e portan flores, portan bordos per dan amadas. Barcas avian florada suspenjada, aureta la nuit tan perfumada. Puiver, ancien seradas remembren la sancada, tan amorosam tots quera un mostriver. Puiver, the time's approaching for reuniting, days are lengthening, nights are shortening, time's approaching. Puiver, the snows are melting, hawthorns budding, leaves are greening, times are singing, birds approaching. Blood in my veins more strongly is flowing, cords of friendship more tightly will be binding. Puiver, 
is now renewing once more again in this lifetime. We'll green the vine of our Puyver. Puyver, we still remember those summer evenings. Days were lengthening, nights were shortening, sweetest evenings. Puyver, such joy together, we carried flowers through shaded bowers and leafy bowers to our beloveds. Boats adorned with sweet-smelling blossoms that perfume the night with such promise. Puyver, I still remember those far-off evenings, so much in love with all that was of our Puyver. I said vida, revegeran nuestro Puyver. Al cap de set santans, revegera lolorel. I'm just going to look for some water. I thought I had some Excuse me. So, the first lyric poetry, the very first lyric poetry in the vernacular in Western European literature, the troubadour sang of fina mors, fina mors, refined or perfect love, the artistic expression of parache. For the very act of loving his lady transformed the troubadour. It opened his heart and enabled him to rise to a higher moral and spiritual level. No longer were women denigrated and despised. There were also female troubadours called troubairits. The troubadour Per Vidal proclaimed, For I have put in you my firm hope, and all my heart, and all my trust, and made you my lady and my lord. This refined love could eventually lead to divine love. To be in love is to stretch toward heaven through a woman, sang Uch de Saint Cirque. And Arnaud Daniel maintained, Every day I become better and more perfect, for I love and adore the kindest woman in the world. Can I get you didn't taste Well, poder d'amour augmenta lentamente, a quel amor que ne sab jamais jujar. Amor que oferta compasión del cor, quien es para siempre para las pasres. Un amor que estira fizel siempre, no desta na dis que jamás morirá. Un amor que transforma, que transforma. Mientras sana das por haber tal vagat, del mundo sin pensamiento ni pensado. Mientras domna sola un vicha amat, le matan lo cobrizat les hay quitat. Del mundo sin pensamiento ni pensada, reis comtis palitet mon anafertat, tot se tal a tal brigalia hay comtat, tinsara tai trobat, ara tai trobat. Premiere viela ma remimat mira, candens tes el pigonda ment agachar, a la vet spin tes el zamitis a vist, a new sense pensamenta y pensada. I accessed the moment que my manat, and all through you pigon dament on a gut, you are a cosanat, a kia dispert, on cop and car a car amor and cara. And senya madam marte perte, you metis, and senya meta compassion, and senya me, ta savies a comprenison, voli manigad in a blood it is else, sen naufragat in a mar de sobra mar. Per fin que si aguiren escut que vegi, nuestro mon per tezels, per tezels, nuestro mon per ton amor, per ton amor. Lo temes e lo temes e ancara tos temes, mi las anadas no son pas mai canchon, din zai ses de viaj del reviel amor. Tezels que me ricotan, me desfizan, seis carzels que de mor me desligan. Lucy san anel justisa, me transforma en dens lo, que vol drai venger, po drai venger. Enseña me la droli al fin amor, enseña me la droli al fin amor. When I deeply gaze into your eyes, I see the power of love slowly rise, the love that knows nothing of disguise, the love that true compassion implies, that asks for nothing in reprise, but that forever truth implies, this love accepts no compromise, a love that transforms and never dies. And through the world I've moralized, many a song of love improvised, many a woman's bed patronized, many an affection trivialized, 
adored, being idolized by counts and kings, desensitized, but now you help me visualize how a new life could crystallize. Memories compelled me and advised to deeply gaze into your eyes. In them what I saw I despised, a shallow self unrealized. And that was when I realized another self was hidden deep inside that you had called to made arise. Once again, my love, one more time. Teach me how to love you, make arise myself. Teach me truth to recognize. Teach me to understand, to be wise. As I drown in the blue of your eyes, shipwrecked in the sea of this reprise, so I may be reborn and realize how the world looks through love, through your eyes. What's life like through love, through your eyes? Time and time and time before, a thousand years is a day no more in this journey of our ancient amour. Your eyes that hold me and implore, your eyes are love forevermore. Now lead me safely to the shore, no need to wander further to explore. In love is the power to restore, and so teach me the way to Fina Mor. Many patrons of the troubadours were associated with the growing spiritual movement. Known as good men and good women, or good Christians, later called Cathars, their philosophy of love and compassion directly challenged the teaching of the Roman Church and the feudal system. Completely misunderstood by the Inquisition, who questioned and frequently tortured the Cathars, the Church thought that they were Manichaeans, dualists, who believed in an external good God and an external bad God. They couldn't comprehend that the Cathars believed that the power to do good or evil resided solely inside the person rather than outside, and that this demanded personal responsibility for one's actions. The Cathars did not believe in any intermediary between human and divine. So there was no priesthood, only teachers comprising both men and women called parfait and parfait. And these teachers asked for no tithes, but lived off the fruits of their own labor. And they were not ignorant and corrupt as were so many of the clerics of the Roman church at that time. Their philosophy was expressed in their gospel, l'Evangelie second la campagne ben amata, the gospel of the beloved companion, written in Occitan, years before the Christian Bible was translated into the vernacular. In fact, the concept of parache, the fina mores of the troubadours, and the Cathar philosophy were essentially one and the same thing. But this philosophy threatened the status quo. It threatened its power and its greed. And so the status quo sought to er eradicate it in a war of genocide known as the Albigensian Crusade called by Pope Innocent III and aided by the French king, ostensibly it was to root out the Cathar heresy. In reality, it was to destroy this kingdom of heaven on earth and reestablish the church's total authority, including its collection of tithes, to raid the wealthier southern lands and to acquire a port on the Mediterranean Sea. From 1209 to 1229, this devil's crusade ravaged the land and slaughtered as many as one million people, 12 million in today's density figures. In doing so, it destroyed a more educated, creative, tolerant, and equitable world. A troubadour roams the lands of Occitania, star to the lords, lover to the ladies. His outward life is rich and yet he questions two different walks of life and two beliefs. The lady he admires warns of conflict. A papal shadow falls across the land as darkness gathers over the horizon. Time will come when he must take a stand. For long he's never given his allegiance, nor chosen between one truth and the other. A cynic, he takes life as he finds it, till one day his illusions fall apart. The murderous horde descends to rape and pillage. The Church of Rome destroys the Church of Love. The culture of Parach, that is Occitania, is now doomed by darkness from above. To that horde composed of soldiers and of prelates, justice, honor, balance are empty words. It takes by force what was never offered. Slowly westward cries of carnage can be heard. 
rapaciously destroying all before it. The night sky is in flame, the moon is hidden. Sanctuary is scorned, oaths have no meaning. He wanders through a world turned upside down. One day starting out upon a journey, all too quiet as he rides towards Limu. The roads and the fields are quite empty. A sense of dread in his heart he knows is true. As he rides into the town he sees the people all clustered round the square before a pyre. The victim, a young parfait, a great beauty. He is aghast that she will perish in the fire. Too late to stop the flames all consuming, too late to stop the wrong being done. He can only watch and witness this girl's torment as from her, his, her eyes to his awareness is begun. From the furnace of that fatal funeral pyre rises up a burning passion in his heart to join the cause of right for Occitania, to find himself and thence the strength to do his part. Straight on he rides to Foix to find the lady, swear allegiance to their cause, his heart is rife. At her feet he lays his lute, his sword, his ego, and vows to serve her the remainder of his life. Many years their paths travel together, evading soldiers of the church that they fight for the freedom and the love of Occitania, and struggle on in vain to save the light. Per Occitania recobrar farach e prets. And so the troubadour fought on, and so the crusade dragged on, increasing in savagery and butchery, until the burning passion of resistance flared up. It was a woman who sought to strengthen the people's spiritual resolve. Her name was Esclamande de Foix, later called the Joan of Arc of the South. Daughter of one of the most powerful nobles in the land, she opened schools, clinics and workshops for women before eventually becoming a parfait. Esclarmonde, her name means light of the world. She was a light. She was much more than just a legend. She was a force of nature. She was a light that shone against the darkness and never did the darkness overcome it. Tis as tostems veran la lucida on fosca estes altres distressa. Tis as tostems veran la lucida on fosca estes altres distressa. Tis mans on leva don all espasa de mescaltres clinan al malchol malia. Tarabia rai re lan justice abra. Pazun gausa. Ten zotola dralia, ta rabia rai re lan justisa bra, pazun gausa, ten zotola dralia, te se samfialas, te aure roja, te la cause range mantela, pats passion den te zel se fa, justis ta keste prets gania, pats passion den te zel se fa, Justice ta keste prets, e prets, ganyo, ganyo. The Crusaders and the Inquisition never caught Esclamond. So elusive was she that they named her the Fox of Foix and placed a huge bounty on her head. And when the Crusade had finally ended and the Inquisition was now raging throughout the land, the huge fortification on the top of the mountain that she had helped to plan, Montségur, still stood as a place of refuge for the Cathars. Then in 1244, a final siege took place. It lasted for over 10 months, and it was only the betrayal by a Basque that brought it about its capitulation. Given two weeks to decide their fate, whether to be burned alive at the stake, or to wear the yellow cross for the remainder of their lives, over 200 of Montségur's inhabitants chose to be burned at the stake as alive to witness their beliefs. Just before the end of those two weeks, in the middle of the night, four Faidit, dispossessed nobles turned warriors, climbed down the sheer cliff face of Montségur and made their way across the valley into a, 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 a mountain, um, into a cave in a mountain opposite, whereby they signaled back their escape. With them, they carried the famous treasure of Montségur. But this was not a hoard of gold or the Holy Grail, as some have believed but rather the original copy of their gospel, the gospel of the beloved companion. 
which they then took to safety across the Pyrenees into the friendlier climes of Aragon. Now the Inquisition spread its ugly tentacles into every part of Occitan life and destroyed the very fabric of society. Those who were denounced by jealous neighbors or grudge bearers were never told of the charges against them, nor allowed any legal representation and tortured into denouncing others, even members of their own family. The troubadours had already left Occitania because their music had been declared heretical. Even to be caught humming one of their melodies was cause for inquisitional inquiry. They followed the same trail into Aragon or northeast into Lombardy. Any, remain, any remaining Cathars also fled, some even hiding in Benedictine and Franciscan monasteries and, nun monasteries and nunneries. The end of this brilliant society came in 1271 when it was officially annexed to the French crown. and French law superseded that of Occitania. This land where Paracha and Afinamors had created a unique environment that shed a light through the medieval shackles of xenophobia, misogyny, intolerance, and totalitarianism, of dogma and disempowerment. It was gone, destroyed, eradicated. Or was it? Where did the ideas for the Reformation come from? or the Enlightenment, or the belief that people could rule themselves without being beholden to a king. Perhaps it was these very Occitan heretics, hidden sometimes in plain sight, who were able to spread their beliefs throughout Europe and finally break the Inquisition's cast-iron grip over its people, society and culture. Where are your glories now, Toulouse, red rose city of time gone by? Béziers, your ancient cathedral no more than dust, a crumbling cuisa squats disconsolately by the road. What is that object perched upon the pog of Montségur? Occitania, your proud history of the red and the gold, lost memories and snatches of song and laughter by the lake at Puyvert. Dewdrops on the wild hawthorn freshly glisten. Listen, can you hear the cries carried by the mistral wind? Beaucaire, from once happy ramparts, see the fast flowing Rhine, Purveyor, purveyor of silk and spices, yet clashing shrieks and sword intrude upon your sun-bleached walls, your gentle, courteous grace, ravaged by the northern hordes, echoes in the city square. See proud Perpetus aloft, and yonder Cherubus, lit by signals raised, rising from bold Aguilar, Term, and Puylorens, five sons of the brave defiance of Lady Carcassonne, what Charlemagne left in defeat, de Montfort raped and rotted, ruination, fabric slashed by cleric and crusader, Dune, Pamier, Fanjou, fated seats of youthful learning, gentle perfect village precipitously abandoned, leaves cabaret alone and wailing blindly in the wild. Rise up again, a new star shining in a far off land, bring back the beauty of our me melodies, our harmonies of the soul. Spirit of Paracha, honor raised, renewed, for Occitania is an ideal that never will die. Thank you. Hmm? That's the flag of the Occitan. Mm -hmm. Yes. If you go into front and to the south, you'll see it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, could you comment on uh, the Occitanian um, approach to perfectibility mm -hmm. of humans? It's through love. It's through the power of love. Yes, that you, you um, it, it, it's, it's the idea of paracha, of, of um, embodying all of these qualities, right thought and right action, honor, justice, tolerance, generosity, truthfulness. So it's, it's, as I said, the, 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 the idea of paracha, which is the same as finamor, is the same as the philosophy of the Cathars. And the Occitans are not originally French? They're from no, no, elsewhere? No, they are from the south of France. Oh, right. But they, um, they do not, many people do not consider themselves, like, well, they have a French passport, but they think of themselves as being Occitan first. 
Um, it's, it's a very strong, very strong um, idea. It's similar to Catal Catalonia, in the Cat uh, Catalonia. So the Catalans are agitating for independence. The Occitans never had a country, so they can't really agitate for, Oxy for, for independence. But they can agitate for a more equitable world. Languedoc, yes, Languedoc is the language of, the, uh, of, of Occitania. Languedoc would be the language of the East. Well, really, you have the, um, the Languedoc in the south of France and the Languedouil in the north of France. Now, the Languedoc, um, or Occitan as it's called today, there are about five different dialects. There's um, Auvergnat, there's Gascon, there's Limousin, there's um, Languedocia, and there's the one in the Rhone Alps. Languedocia, on this Provencal, um, Frederick Mistral won the Nobel, Peace Prize, the Nobel Prize for Literature um, in writing in Occitan, which really began to bring it back again. Mm -hmm. uh, now, the north of France, again, has about five different dialects. Um, it's uh, Picard, it's Artois, it's, um, it's Ile de France, mm -hmm. it's Francian. So there, there were different dialects, but they are different languages. Occitan is actually an independent language, just like Catalan. But so why would we talk longer than the longer? I don't know. <laughs> Maybe longer talk and longer hear. That's the way of saying yes. Yes. It's a way of saying yes. Exactly. Hear. That's how we distinguished. Exactly. Exactly. How did you become interested in this? Um, well, I started, uh, I was doing my, um, my doctorate and um, took a course on uh, Provencal poetry and just became completely enamored of it and thought it was wonderful and um, decided I wanted to write my, my dissertation on the, uh, the origins of the troubadours. And my, um, my advisor said, no, no, you can't do that. That's far too controversial. You need to find something else. Okay, we were at the Catholic University. So I said, how about heresy? <laughs> heresy? Yes, heresy. So I wrote it on um, political, social, sexual, um, uh, societal, religious heresy. And with that came the whole idea about the troubadours, who of course were heretical, uh, about the Cathars, who I saw really more as, as social heretics than religious heretics because they had such a different style of, of, of life. People do remain, but... Um, the idea very much remains in, in the Occitan of Parache. Uh, I work sometimes with a group of troubadours um, over there, and yes, they very much hold the idea of Parache uh, as honor of the Occitan. What is the area of France that we can think about between yes. where? Well, it used to be, it used to be from the, the Loire River um, all the way down to the Mediterranean Sea and from Bordeaux in the east all the way over to the Alps in the west, the Grenoble in the west. So it was about a third of what is today um, contemporary France. So was that the beginning of, of poetry related to romantic life? Yes, it was. This was the, absolutely the beginning of poetry. The beginning of feminism. Yes. That's feminism. Well, the feminism was interesting because actually you had in, I think it was in the 8th, cent 8th century, a Visigothic king named Recuswinth who um, who, who wrote the Liber Judicorum, which had all of these um, rights for women. And those never really went away in the Languedoc. And they sort of expanded into the right for an education, the right to, to own your own, own lands, the right to, to govern your own people. And so it was, um, it, it was completely different in that respect. And when the crusade came, it, it just destroyed that, that entire thing because French law was very different from Occitan law. And so Occitan law was just shoved to one side. Talk a little bit about, or ask you to talk a little bit about, um, this is touching. The, uh, the Cathar religion is supposed to have a relationship with the early Gnostic uh, practitioners of Christianity in the first centuries after the death of Jesus. So mm -hmm. what I'm trying to do, what I've always wondered is, uh, did the Cathars have, they were, they uh, were, you know, in juxtaposition against the Catholic Church, but they had this special document, this favorite gospel. Yeah. Uh, did it have anything to do with the 
traditional Christianity. Yeah. Uh, was there a belief that Jesus was still uh, a prophet or that his teachings of his love teachings, were yes, part that's... of the Cathar talk? Because nothing is ever, when they're discussing this, yes. uh, people never talk about this part of it. Right. And I think that they were actually a more pure form of Christianity and following the teachings uh, from the Gnostics uh, about Jesus and Mary and a lot of the legends of the south of France come from all of this. Yeah, absolutely uh, right. Anyway, that's not been a part of any discussions in this yes, area. Yes, absolutely right. So I'm wondering if you could talk just a little about that. This is the book you need. It's called The Complete Gospel of the Beloved, The Gospel of the Beloved Companion, The Complete Gospel of Mary Magdalene. Right, guys. Mm -hmm. See, I knew there was a connection. Yeah, and this and was the, the gospel. And the Catholics were actually defended by the Templars. In they were. Yes. Secretly. Yes, because the Templars um, never lifted a hand against the Catholics. They were many from the Troubadour area. Mm -hmm. and and many of the leaders were from yes. the south of France. Yes, exactly. The first yeah, this is all very fascinating. The first Templars actually came from the, from the Lombard, from the south of France. But you're right. But yes, the, the, the idea um, is that... It, and unfortunately, I don't have any copies, but it's on Amazon. <laughs> 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 It's called the Gospel of the Beloved Companion. Got it. The Beloved Companion is Mary Magdalene. Is Mary Magdalene. Right. See, that's not said, but that's exactly what it is. Yes. Uh, I'm going to just say, I know it. I have a locket that I got in the south of France of, of uh, Mary Magdalene as a saint. And it should go throughout the south of France, all the way over to Santiago. Uh, Templars provide protection for all those pillars. The Magdalene culture is throughout that area, and there are churches through the area for a thousand miles, uh, all the way over to Galicia, that are dedicated to Mary Magdalene. Uh, all of this means that there was a whole lot more going on in that area that, that survived this crusade uh, that relate to the beloved I just said it because nobody knows this and I've been through that whole area and walked the Camino and uh -huh. saw this. Well, the different castles, the different churches, the medical exactly. centers that they built. Mm -hmm. There's still evidence of this whole area. Yes, in the Occitan, Notre Dame refers to Mary Magdalene. It does not refer to the Virgin Mary. Right, I know. Yeah. And it's always that kind of yes. dichotomy that you don't quite understand. It's never quite spoken of. Right, and this actually, um, there was a church in Sainte Marie de la Mer where Miriam and her, um, and her, um, her followers um, uh, landed. And that the church was originally called Notre Dame de Rastis, Our, Our Lady of the Boat. And then it changed into uh, Notre Dame de la Mer or something like that. But originally it was called Our Lady of the Bark because she arrived in a boat with uh, no oars and no rudder. And so, <laughs> so it... Uh, yeah, she was, she was going somewhere else, but the, she got blown off course. <laughs> so, I'm happy to answer any more questions. Yeah. Um, musically, um, what are the roots of, of this music? Where does it, it, it seems That's to yeah, bear a wider yes. circle than... Yes, it does. And um, I believe that the music came from Andalusia, from Andalus because um, the very first troubadour was called Aguilhem de Petus. He was William the um, Ninth of Poitou. And his father went down into An Andalusia, well, it was still um, Al-Andalus, still under the Moors, and brought back um, about 200 Kian singing girls. And so this Arabic music moved up across the Pyrenees. And then uh, Gilhem himself, Gilhem de Petus, he went on crusade to the Holy Land and he brought back more Arabic singers. So you had this real Arabic influence in the music and you can hear it still in the music. And, and the, as I mentioned that you had Arabic schools, Arabic music schools in, uh, in the Occitan. Does it have anything to do with gypsies? Um, I don't know. I don't know. That, that's an interesting question. The Roma have their own tradition and um, it's very much a, a flamenco flamenco kind of thing, so I'm, I'm not sure, but it, I haven't investigated that, but it could be interesting. 
but that's that sort of that um, soulful sound very much. So I think that whereas the philosophy is coming out of Paracha and out of the Cathars, the music itself is coming out of Al Andalusia. How can we uh, l listen to more of your music? CD. <laughs> <laughs> Nicely done. <laughs> Thank you. Well, right into it. <laughs> but it's, uh, it was a wonderful society, and um, which just goes to show something like that can happen. <laughs> so, so we Democrats always say, well, we need to be unified, we need to make things happen instead of fighting with being nasty. Maybe there's a chance. Maybe there's a chance. So one of the sad reasons why. Um, why um, the Occitans were, were defeated by the Crusaders we, because there was lots of, they were sort of fragmented and they were having um, personal little quarrels with each other and so they weren't uniting and that was one of the problems that had they really united, had they come together. They weren't a warlike culture. Well, it was, it was a warrior culture. I mean, it's the whole thing. Not that the Cathars were not a war uh, warrior culture, no, but the, 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 the culture of that time, the Middle Ages, was a warrior culture very much. I mean, it's, you know, people have this romantic idea, and it was, it was pretty awful. You had famine, you had um, dreadful diseases, you had drought, you had people coming along killing you. Um, so even within the Occitan, you, know, you still had drought, you still had famine, you still had disease. And if you look on... Um, you can see sometimes in the cathedrals and the doors in, in Europe, you see these people who are really ugly. Yeah. You know, uh, those were actually, that was what was happening because they didn't have the medicine to, to deal with goiters and to deal with hunchbacks and so forth and so on. Well, thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, awesome.